Hosted by a cock and frock, shuck a tug. I've hit the streets, been round the block, shuck a tug. And jerk off in my dirty sock, shuck a tug. My name is Dr. Rhea. <laughs> Some people call me Fea. I've got something to say, allow me just one prayer. Okay, I uh, suffer from a mental block, shuck a tug. Like, oh my god, and what the fuck, shuck a tug. So turn it up and sit right back, shuck a tug. For the first time of my life, I felt beautiful. I felt comfortable under my skin. Shame shouldn't be anymore because it just weighs you down in accomplishment in life. with people coming up to you and you want to take you to wine and dine you and it's a whole other world out there and you realized you could pass and beautifully they are expressing themselves in the best way they possibly can without compromise and they're going to go through this life and they're going to go through it once the best way they know how well on Hotel Street, in between River and Mauna Kea, there was a place called The Glades. That was the home for the Mahos. Here at this nightclub, males impersonate females. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome here to The Glades Cocktail Show Lounge. It was awesome. Awesome. Everybody went to The Glades, because that was the place to go. Our production numbers was fabulous. In fact, we were considered the best show in the world. Exquisite. Burlesque. Some people just cannot handle it. Somebody's out there looking so beautiful, and you know, that'll screw up your brain. I've never seen a man in my life I want to marry. If <laughs> one ever looks at me like that, I'm gonna kill him and tell God he died. The late 60s to the early 70s, we were really had hard time. We had to wear badges. I am a boy. Whenever we left the club, that button, you had to have it on you. And if you didn't, you would be arrested. It just sounds like that kind of thing that you think of happening in Europe, you know, during a war, when a genocide is about to happen, and not here in America where, you know, we ought to be free to have any aspect of our identity be public or be private as we choose. I remember being home one evening. My father says, so where are you working? I said, well, downtown, you know. He said, oh, what are you doing there? And my brother says, he dresses up as a girl and dances on a stage. And my father said, oh, well, it is not what you do in life. It's how you do it in life. Because you are who you are. And we cannot change that. You go with your heart, but you have to be happy. Hello everybody, what's up? How's it? <laughs> I'm your hostess, D.R. Rea. Oh, this show's called Shaka Talk. Um, yeah, and I have a super special guest today. Her name is Connie Flores. Yay! Yay! She's from Hula Girl Productions. Yes. And what we just watched was a clip from your latest passion project, yeah? Yes. Um, the Glades Project? The Glades Project. What was the Glades? Glades. Mm -hmm. Fantastic nightclub. Really? From the 60s and the 70s. Are you old enough to know it was? Yeah, you? I was born in 1960. I'm oh, not really? afraid to say. Okay. Oh, you look good, girl. But I remember it from that time period. Really? Yeah. Was it scandalous? Was it famous? It I was scandalous it was. and famous. Really? Especially you when you're a young kid, twerp like me. Wow. So you knew about it when you were young? I heard about it probably wow. by the time I was already uh, 9, 10 years old. What did you hear? I was in Hilo. Oh, was, you're a Big Hilo, Island girl? Big Island girl. Oh, Hilo's, I didn't know that. Hilo okay. side. Right on. And you guys knew about an Oahu club? Well, in we, you know, you have Mamo Street over there, not a Hotel Street. Oh, they, that's their red light yeah, the district? that's there? a red light oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Okay. And so you're collecting footage and stories? Collecting footage, trying to still trying to find old moving images from of. the 60s and the 70s. 
like eight millimeter, 16 millimeter. So that's probably been the hardest part, yeah. finding old footage. To so talk about the club. So what got you interested in this club, The Glades? Well, um, the project? as you know, I worked on Ke Kulana, Hey Mahu, Remembering a oh, Sense okay. of Place. Okay. And when that film finished and we were touring with it, uh, there were quite a few elders within the community here mm -hmm. that said, why don't you do a project on the Glade show oh. lounge? So the and they, girls and the, it was the older folks that kept bringing that up over and over. So I kind cool. of like um, started doing some research and started realizing nobody's doing anything yeah. on the 60s or the 70s. And I started, I was curious, like, why not? Why, why aren't there documentaries or films? You always see stuff on the 30s and the 40s. Mm. all the time in the 40s, even up to the early 50s, but never the 60s or the 70s. Okay. And then the more of the research I did, it was like, what happened? And it was statehood. 1959 was statehood. Okay. And so tourism, the population growth was about 10% on okay. the census every 10 years, 10% growth, which is huge. And it was like, we were growing so fast. Office of Hawaiian Affairs, our first Hawaiian Immersion Schools weren't until 76, 78. So there's that 20 year gap. Your website said that um, we had more construction going on in 1969 than the rest of the world? Yes. Really? How do you know? Actually, it was Bette Midler talking to uh, um, Larry oh. King. Okay. And on the show, she was, you know, they were doing all these oh. stats and things, plus on my research. Okay. Checking out the, um, the research here and within our state archives as well as within our our uh, transportation department. Oh, you don't fool around. Now you dug into every it's aspect research. of Well, as a documentary life. filmmaker, I, th I feel that it's our, our work. Okay. And it's, and it's nonfiction. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you're, you're finding the truth of things, even to the point of who owned what properties on Hotel Street, what areas, wow. rather than just saying hearsay actually doing the research and documenting it as a documentary, but knowing what you're talking about rather than hearsay. Very different from like reality TV uh -huh. or somebody who just puts a documentary together and just goes with hearsay and pushes an agenda. I would rather go with the actual facts of the The time. truth? The truth. Uh -huh. Supreme That's... Court Library doing the research. Really? It's, yes. Just to talk about Mahoos? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I go there, and it was an old tutu that was there. And she goes, I've been here 40 years, and I didn't know that there was a law instituted that said that you had to wear a badge that said, yeah, I'm a boy so or I'm a man. And it was like she was there, and she goes, I've been here my, most of my life, and I've never heard of that. And I go, well, there was. And the, so because of the military or because of the It was of because public? of the military. You and know, the military would get a list in the 60s. Of where not to go. Where not to go. And it was a black it. list. Uh -huh. And they had these 10 clubs that you don't go to. So one of the clubs, of course, is the, the Glade, Glade Show Lounge. Hot. You know, you had Swing Club Ooh, and, and you had Hubba Hubba. Hubba. But where did all the GIs go? Mm -hmm. The Glade, so the Glade Show Lounge. They know what they're looking the for. Glamour they know what they're looking for, but do they know what they're getting? Or is yes. that why the button? Or do you, I think a well, lot of guys know. The button was instituted because there was, you know, there's a lot of different reasons okay. before it even went through the legislature. But it was a series of a couple of articles that came out in our Honolulu Advertiser and Star Bulletin. Really? So there was a series over three front page articles, can you believe it, in 1963, front page. Wow. Um, and they were written by a... Um, a news writer who just moved here was working with correspondents with the Vietnam War. So it was that okay. same time period, right? Wow. Okay. So he, this was his first series that he was writing. Um, later he became an, um, an anchorman for our, our news shows. Later on he became a state representative, way oh, later. Oh, it's Bob Jones. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so you'll find out after you see the film. Okay. <laughs> so the bottom line is, you know, there was a couple of articles. You had yappies. That, that was on Kapuhulu, that was like the Glade Show Lounge, where you had people that performed in drag queens and performers. And then you had the Glade Show Lounge, which opened shortly after. Oh, okay. Which was in 64. Glades opened in 64. 64. And, and so what happened was in 63, all of this commotion's happening. And uh, so they 
the mayor at the time was like, well, we got to do something. About these T's going about on. About these <laughs> transgender, you know, and, and at that time you didn't have trans, that word you transgender. You didn't have the word, yeah. You didn't even have hormone stuff going on. Oh, really? Like, no. Okay. A lot of these girls were so beautiful, they were just seamless. Oh, far, yeah. Seamless. Oh, boy. And photos <laughs> to prove it. Right and uh, their performances were amazing. The things so unreal would be real. I felt one of the most important queens in Hawaii, like, um, to be honored to be part of um, the Glade show, it was an honor. And like, um, we were the best show in any way. In fact, we were considered the best show in the world. Everyone talks about the Glade show. If you go to Hawaii, you've got to go see the Glade show. Because we did production, we did highlights, and we did everything that anyone can think, and it would be unbelievable, like can-can, kicking. We used to pack it in, pack it in, and especially the weekends. Oh, the long lines outside of Glade? Yeah, it was all the sailors. All you see was white uniforms. At first it was okay, but then after they, they made it, um, what do you call it, off limits. You know, because we were bad for people. We were gay. We were homosexuals. <laughs> Whatever. We were happy. That's what we were. <laughs> but they would just, they would wait to come in. Honey, we had boyfriends in the Navy, American Navy. And sometimes when the MPs came in, we have to push them upstairs, throw them in full drag, and walk out with them. As God is my witness, you can ask Charmaine, you can ask Brandy, you can ask a whole lot of them. They'll tell you the same story. Okay, in the beginning, it was mostly local crowd. And when we went off limits, we got a lot of military, all those little boys who wanted, they go and look for the place to go for off limits. And they started coming into the club. So it was a mixture. It really was a mixture from the beginning. And um, a lot of local celebrities used to come down to Waikiki after their shows to come see us. You know, so. Being in back of those lights is where I learned my trade. Because I sat there every night watching the show with Butch Ellis and Brandy. You have like China Nguyen, um, Wanda Chapman, Lee J. Taylor, myself, and um, I think one more, one more I think was Mona Fleming. You know, they were the line dancers and everything. All we did was do line dancing. There was no solo acts or anything. So whatever production we were doing, like Oklahoma, or we're doing something, we had to be in that part, in that costume. And we do the line dancing, and then they would feature like Brandy Lee coming on stage. She was the lead singer. And we have the MC like Butch Alice. Then you have Stacey Lane who does the comedy. So before Stacey Lane got um, into our act, we had Luau Feet. May God bless him. He died in 1969 um, of uh, appendicitis. And he was wow love from Waikiki to Hotel Street. He was just the most funniest, funniest man that you can think of. Pod drags and pot and pot booch. We had Cookie, she passed away, it was Henry Watson. And let's see, Tammy Kay, oh beautiful. She came from the main and was a stripper. She looked like Elizabeth Taylor when she dressed up gorgeous, a nice body, small petite. And we had um, at one point two strippers. We had Jade East and Kim Kimberly. So I used to put a number together about them. I said East meets West, and they hated each other on stage. They were competing for days. It was so funny. And they would try to outdo each other. That was the best part of it, actually. That's why I put, them, put that number out. And of course, the feature Hanalei. Can't beat Hanalei. That was a number you could... No one has duplicated today. There will never... There'll be another Dina. There'll be another Brandy Lee. There'll be but there'll never be another Hanale, ever. That was, his moniker says it all. The young man who dares to be different. That was his moniker. And it was perfect for him, because he was. When I was a kid, Dyke's Tavern in Kalihi, my mom and I was in Dyke's store, and they just had put up this picture, and was of Hanale with full makeup on, teased hair, 
looking backwards like this, with tassels on his, fire tassels on his butt. And I looked at the picture and I was like about eight years old, nine years old. And my mom and I was going to the car and I looked and I said, mom, is that a boy or a girl? And my mother said, yes. That's it. And I was like, uh-oh, that's not the answer I wanted. <laughs> that's not the answer I wanted. But that's what my mother said. She said yes. Two, three. One, two, three. It was three levels of stage. You know, you had you had the top stage at the Glade, and then you had this little step down with this this rounded, like half moon shaped stage that you could stand there with like a step or so and then you come down the stairs and there was another bigger round stage and you got two steps and then you go to the main stage so productions were beautiful because it was you know placed in different places the lights were great there was no obstacles in the way of um, vision as far as seeing the show there was not an obstacle in the way of the whole club. I don't care where you were sitting, you had a good seat at the Glade. Yeah, it was a really big room. It was about, could hold about 200 people. And the seating was nice because the stage was like right straight ahead of you. There was no pillars, no nothing. It was just a nice room. Double-decker stage, I never heard about that. And there's never been anything like it since. And I don't think there ever will be. I was glad that I was there to have experienced that. Just How did you get amazing. people, like was it hard to get people to contribute their stories? It seems like that was a big secret back in the day. You know, it was a big secret back in the day because you gotta imagine Stonewall hasn't even happened. Yeah, at this not even point. the Civil Rights Movement really. Civil Rights <laughs> Movement hasn't even happened. So to get their stories was, at first it was like, um, actually what I did is I did a little bit of basic research before um, I knew that I was gonna go on the road and find these stories here locally as well as so you from reached, New York to while Chicago. While you're traveling, you reached out to people there? Yeah, so wow. I put out like a um, national um, press release saying that I'm looking for stories regarding the Glade Show Lounge. I call it the Glades Project. Uh -huh. And uh, truly, it's a project. And when I put the word out there, literally within 30 minutes, the phone was starting to ring really? off the wall. Wow. And it was like we had to have things structured and ready and taking down contacts and who were reaching and already kind of know who the performers were by name, you know, because mm. you have a stage name, you have a street oh. name, you have a birth name. <laughs> a boy name, a girl name. So trying to keep those things in your head was not easy, you know. Were and then so like even for some of the girls that were murdered, during yeah, that what's time. That you just so their 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 records in the newspaper would show the male name, oh. not knowing what their stage street name, name or straight stage name is, and it was it's very difficult wow. tracking down. So talking with the girls, I'm able to find who's who, what's what. So um, that made it very difficult as well. Yeah, I forgot. Trying yeah. to keep that you know like which which is which and um, and even to this day some of the girls have changed their name mm, I do, I do you think a lot of them are hiding or some are hiding yeah um, or maybe you know it's funny because um, when I put that press release out and I started on the road and I started in New York mm -hmm. and and then I worked my way across and then I was in San Francisco and a couple of interviews each time getting a couple of interviews and then going, it was like the coconut wireless is Hawaii. Is. Yeah. And it was like each one was talking to each other as we were going along on the road. And then we drove from San Francisco down to L.A. and we had some more interviews with um, Butch Ellis. Who had, who, Butch oh. <laughs> was the name of the MC at the time oh, of you the found Glade him. Show Lounge. So I found him down there. At first he didn't want to interview and later he did. And he actually ended up, when he left here, Mm -hmm. Opening up at the Queen Mary, which was in Los Angeles, oh. and was there for 25 years. Damn. Okay. And retired afterwards from there. So he's still around. Okay. Where a lot and of the he's girls... living in Florida right now because he's retired. Of course. And he, of course, he says hi to all the girls. <laughs> he misses everyone in Hawaii. Well, did you get to talk to a lot of the performers? Or um, I did. Yeah. Quite a few. Okay. From the first, they, it's kind of like three generations. Mm. The Glade Show Lounge is known for one, the the early generation. Then there was a second group, 
And then oh. there was a third generation because it was almost a 20 year time period. Wow. Almost okay. within there that it was open. So it was, you know, the Macy Williams was the later uh, group. Mm -hmm. And then the, the middle group, you had the Brandy Lee. And then you oh. also had Prince Hanalei, who was there throughout the time. Oh, he was? I yeah. keep hearing that name. And throughout like, uh, the whole time. And when the Glade Show Lounge closed, he passed away mm -hmm. shortly afterwards. Did you, um, do you have footage of him? We haven't found, we, you know, it's funny. Um, Jack Sion had some video footage. Mm -hmm. And so we, when we watched it, it was all jump all over the place. And the rest of the footage was good, but it was huh. on videotape. Oh. And as you know, videotape, people think it's going to last forever yeah. when it first came out. It was a transfer from an 8 millimeter, But it do, you can't repair it, not like film, mm -hmm. where you can actually go back and clean it up and repair it. We couldn't do it with the video. I, I even took it to L.A., took it to some, some uh, film labs. and They couldn't work with it? No. Is most of the stuff you're getting, it's all 8 millimeter, 16 millimeter? Eight millimeter, sixteen that's, millimeter. So that's, that's expensive what we're, to work with, isn't well, it? Well, six, and then the other sixteen millimeter, Desoto Brown, who's an archivist at Bishop Museum, uh -huh. was able to locate from the old PBS Hawaii KHET. Wow! So we have a little sixteen like, minute clip of the actual show from that time period. Really? And that was from nineteen seventy one, seventy three. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Huh. And then, of course, other ways of footage is. Um, the old Hawaii Five O's. That's so weird. Which the cat, the cr crew, mm -hmm. and the cast were regulars going to the Glade show. They were at that time. Oh my God! They were there. Oh Loyal Gardner was there. <laughs> oh really? Um, a lot of our performers, Hawaii performers, were because it was a place where, like, my parents had been, my grandparents had been, my aunties and uncles. Did you talk to and your family you, or these celebrities about the show? Or? Well, you know, I've talked to some of the celebrities, mm -hmm. and they were like, oh, my God, I remember that. Prince Hanalei was a professional, and they would go cool. on and on. And because it was like an ohana. Mm. In all honesty, it was different. It was an yeah. ohana of, and granted, you had this I'm a boy button where it said, you know, there was a law that was passed called intent to deceive. That's a lot. That's so nuts. So that military men that are coming in can recognize, is that really a man or woman? Mm. So you had to wear this piece of paper mm -hmm. that was about, you know, three by five card that said, I'm a boy or I'm a man. If you didn't wear it, then you were arrested on the spot. $500 and it was a fine. $500 fine. Back then, that's Thrown like a in jail. So the, dollars, millions. The paddy wagon <laughs> would come around and pick up all the girls. What? Sometimes they'd pick up 300 girls in a month. No way. Yeah. Oh my God. And in 1968, it went through the legislature again, and then it was a thousand dollar fine. What? Yeah. Until until it was repealed in 70, 1973. Did they make butchies wear I'm a girl button? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just the mahus. Just the mahus. Ah, that's weird. So crazy time periods, huh? Yeah. But the law was very strict then too. You know, you had the boy sign, I am a boy. Actually, to tell the truth, we didn't know nothing about the law that we were deceiving the people. I think it was, I think it was earlier, maybe in 65. I was in the Glade Show then, and I remember dressing up as a girl on Hotel Street, walking down, and um, this cop stopped me. He said, where's your sign? And I did have my sign, but it was covered. And he said, well, you gotta flash it that you're a boy because you're deceiving the public. So they arrested me because my, my sign wasn't out for my jacket. You had to be in the front to say that you're a boy. And the law was very strict when it came to that. We used to fight left and right. Queens used to be arrested every single day because of the sign. We used to get beat up regularly. It was not... It was second nature to us to get lickings on the street by the cops. And there wasn't even manly enough to hit you when you were looking. It's like when you, okay, you can go now, and when you turn away, then they hit you from the back, like that guy. So, do you, did you hear a lot of murder stories? Yes. Really? That's yes. odd. Well, considering the in time. Hawaii, I mean, there's even a couple of the families that I've uh, interviewed uh, where they have, okay, there's five members in the family. They're Hawaiian and Filipino, mm -hmm. and three of them are mahu. Oh. And then two of them, they're their sisters are lesbians okay. and very butchy. <laughs> so you have just the opposite. Okay. One of the sisters that was Mahu was murdered. Mm. And how that family worked through that tragedy 
and it was two military men. Wow. That you know. Oh, this is deep. Yeah, it was. So it's not just a glamour. So you're movie, really it's like, like a time feeling of... it's a time capsule of the times. It really is. And, and, right. the, and then it, you know, people always wonder like. Um, especially now with the whole same-sex marriage and things. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't have to deal with the things that were going on with the blacks or this or that during that time period. And as I'm researching all these things, I'm just, I'm seeing what we would call today hate crimes. Oh, totally. But I'm just seeing them one after another after another. And it was just, was never labeled that. I see. But that's exactly what that's it was. what it was. And I'm just like, kind of like, and it's kind of like heart-wrenching because you're just like, one after another after another and I went I did research at the police department here mm -hmm. and I could actually get the police department the, the captain and the mm -hmm. and the police chief's records he actually has his own book and he has his own article and they actually open, allowed me to go through it Damn. so I'm going through this and I'm just seeing one thing after, and I'm like my god it was just a really really hard time but so it really is that time period of those that survived that time period that are today, and I just, the <laughs> Raquel G. Gregory's that are just their energy. I love Raquel. And so positive. Raquel, Raquel and I'm G. Gregory. Like, but they're survivors from that time period, yet they're just, they're regal. Yeah. They hold, they hold themselves really, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Linda Brown, everybody. And they, yeah, the Linda, and they, they class. that <laughs> class. Yeah. You know, I get choked up thinking about yeah. it, but uh -oh. it's like, Knowing just from, I feel like a historian, I've learned so much about history, but it's like, just knowing all of those girls that have passed girls. away. You look like you're going to cry. Those years, it's just like, <laughs> so wait, okay. it's in a horrendous time period. You're trying to get, uh, so you're still looking for footage of still looking for from the 60s and 70s. Yeah. How do people get it to you? Like, Well, I have a website called thegladesproject.com. Okay. So all of my contact information is right okay. there. And um, I got and my email address info at the glades project if you're not able to do this you're going to do I'm gonna, I'm gonna have i'm going to have mascara running down pretty soon but, uh, so you're gonna you might do reenactments if you don't get the if footage. i don't find That's the footage so and i have to do re two or three maybe three or four reenactments of a as show? the stories they're telling oh okay, okay right there in chinatown hotel street cool well thank you for being our guest i hope things come together well with the movie with uh, everyone else's support. Yeah. Anybody calls in, finds footage, can help out. Right on. It's, that would be more than helpful. So what, do you guys get anything from the Mahoos of the 70s, 60s? <laughs> Call Cotty for the girl. No, glazeproject.org. Glazeproject.com. Okay. So thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you for being my guest, Connie. Thank you. Yeah, the movie. I've seen clips. It's really cool. Thank okay. You. So aloha, everybody. Toodaloo. Right on.